Good morning, everyone. As you can hear, I've got my voice somewhat back. So hopefully it stays with us through this lesson today. Uh, first of all, so I think by the time you're seeing this, Halloween was last night, so I hope you all had a great holiday. You got lots of candy and had lots of fun. So let's get started today, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do, you know what it is, we're gonna set up your worship station. So you can go ahead and put your tea light and your cross on your green cloth. We're still in ordinary time. And like always, let's take a couple of deep breaths and let's slow down our thoughts and get ready to learn, okay? All right, so for the past four weeks, we have been studying Abraham and Sarah and their relationship with God. So if you remember three weeks ago, we talked about Sarah and Hagar. Abraham's two wives and they were fighting so badly that Hagar actually ran away from home but God managed to be with both women during this fight just like he is with all of our family when we have disagreements we've talked about how God fulfilled a promise in an unexpected way when Sarah finally got to have her son Isaac and this week we're going to finish up our unit on Abraham and his family and wrap up the story of what happened with Hagar and Ishmael. So, today we're going to be reading first from our book. And today's lesson is called, A Family Changes Its Shape. And here's the story we'll be looking at. So, what happens when a family changes? Perhaps a baby arrives or a grandparent comes to live with you. Usually the whole family changes. That happened to the family of Abraham, Sarah, and Hagar. When Hagar returned to her family, Sarah, Abraham's first wife, also got pregnant. She gave birth to a son and she named him Isaac. Now Sarah too had a son. She was just as excited about Isaac as Hagar was about her son, Ishmael. The boys were brothers and they played together. You might think that things were back to normal, but they weren't. Sarah never got over the pain she thought that Hagar had caused her. She was still afraid Hagar would become more important in the family than she was. And she was afraid that Ishmael would become more important than her own son Isaac. She just couldn't live with say, Hagar and Ishmael any longer. So the family split up and everyone was unhappy. Sarah was upset. She felt that she and her son Isaac had been mistreated. Abraham was upset because Hagar and Ishmael were leaving. He got up early to see them off. He gave them food and water for their trip. He put Ishmael in Hagar's arms and he said his last goodbyes. Hagar was most upset of all. She had nowhere to go. She walked into the desert nearby. She sat down with her son Ishmael near a small bush for shade, and she began to cry. She didn't know what to do. But God found her again, just when Hagar needed God most. God heard them crying, and he said, don't be afraid. There's a well nearby with cool water to drink. You'll be okay, and Ishmael will be fine. He'll start a big new family and you'll have a new home and a new family. And that's just what happened. Ishmael grew up to be a strong young man. He knew every inch of their new home in the desert. He married a woman from Egypt and they started their own family in their new desert home. Sometimes families change their shape, just like this one did. When that happens, it is hard for everyone, but God is there to help people make it through. So we can see from this story that even though Sarah now has her own son, she is still bothered by Hagar and Ishmael. She is so upset, in fact, that she asks Abraham to send them away. And even though we don't hear about it in the story, God tells Abraham to honor Sarah's request, and he does send them away. We like to think that everything back in biblical times, when God was talking to his people so often, that everything was perfect and wonderful. But I hope you're all learning with these stories that things have never really been perfect. 
Even then, mistakes were made and fights occurred and sometimes families changed. How many of you know a family where there may have been a divorce? How many of you know a family where a baby was born? Or how about, do you know a family where someone had a grandparent or maybe a pet die? Or maybe you know someone where there was an adoption or a parent got remarried and now there are stepbrothers and sisters. Changes happen in every family. Some of those changes are happy ones and some are sad. But the good news is that no matter what change brings to a family, God stands with each of us as we find new ways to continue being a family. This is also a good time to remember that we are not just a part of the family that we live with. We are also one, we are also a family with everyone here at First Presbyterian, and everyone in the world is part of God's great family. In this story, Hagar and Ishmael leaving forever changes Abraham's family. But just like before when she ran away, God was with Hagar in the desert. When she ran away originally, God told her that she would eventually have a new family. And now, after showing her where that water well is, he tells her that Ishmael will grow up to have a big new family and that they will have a new home. And God's promises came true. Ishmael and Hagar made their home in Egypt, and Ishmael did indeed have a great family because he is recognized as the patriarch, which means father, of the religion of Islam. And I think it's really cool that not only can we trace the Christian and the Jewish faiths to Abraham, but also the Islamic ones. So really, we're all much closer than we think we are. And God promised all of this in the Bible. Just like always, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the story now. And you can either write the answers down in your notebook. You can think the answers in your head. Or you can talk about it with another family member, okay? So, who are the people in this story? Were they all part of the same family? How are they different or just like your own family? Which character did you pay the most attention to in this story and why? And what would you have done in this story if you were that character? What role does God play in this story? Thinking about families, who are the people in your family and what makes that family that you're in special or unique? What is your favorite thing to do with your family? And what does your family like to do for fun? And finally, what makes some families different than others? And what do you think it would be like if all families were the same? If you want to do some special activities this week with your family, you can talk about changes that might have happened in your family and what made it shape change and how everyone learned to deal with those changes. You could also talk about how to welcome outsiders. Now in this story, Hagar and Ishmael were the outsiders and instead of welcoming them, Sarah pushed them away. You and your family can talk about ways you can welcome new neighbors, new classmates, and maybe even new family members. Now, there are a couple of items in your box for this week, and um, I accidentally attached one of them to last week's lesson, but I think if you enjoyed it last week, you'll very much enjoy it this week again. So, there is lyrics for a song called Father Abraham, and if you watched it already, you know there is a video link, and it will be in this email as well. And you can sing along, and there are some dance moves to learn. So that's always fun. The other two pages you can color. Let me get those out to show you. You can color them. And then you can also write down words about God's family or what it's like to be a part of God's family. And also remember that you have that Abraham activity book in your box if you haven't finished it. And you can work on that if you like. Whatever you choose to do, I hope you have a great time. So let's close today with a prayer. All right. God of all families, 
Thank you for our special, unique, and sometimes messy families. Thank you for making us a part of your big family and loving each of us always. Amen. All right, guys, I hope you have a great week. I hope you have a great start to November, and I will see you one more time next week, and then Miss Wendy is taking over, okay? Bye-bye.